Hello and welcome to a new uh, episode of India Reboot, the show on which we debate, ideate and discuss that what can be done really to bring India back on the growth map. If one looks at the broader macro environment, the broader macro environment uh, is actually quite conducive, which is that Indian economy has bottomed out, growth is coming back, a fresh earnings and CAPEX cycle has started. Now in the near term, of course, there is a challenge that uh, there is a genuine fear of third wave, there are problems. Uh, when it comes to what is happening in the commodity market as inflation is making a comeback. So what is the best way to bring India back on the growth map? And to discuss that, I, it gives me great pleasure to bring on board Mr. Gopi Chand Induja, co-chairman of Induja Group. It's a rarity to see him on TV, but we are very excited and uh, we are highly excited to have him on the show. Mr. Induja, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I guess my introduction was the question in itself. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a good question you have put together. Now, India has one of the best demographics in the world in terms of young and vibrant economy. India has the best opportunities today for investments. The consumption levels as well as leverage is low compared to developed countries. However, aspiration are improving as the income levels, as well as the integration with global economy uh, are increasing. India is also positioned in a very settled way in terms of corporates following China plus one uh, strategy the recent initiatives such as production linked incentive scheme uh, should create competitiveness. India has an exciting startup ecosystem driving digital adoption across businesses at a rapid pace. Overall, if we don't have another shock, uh, the economy has capacity to grow between 7% to 8%. That's my view. I never believed when they said the GDP will grow to 13% and 14%. Even at that time, if you look my interviews, I was very clear that it has to grow gradually. We should not forget one thing. That although our prime minister, Mr. Modi, has the best vision, has the best intentions to take things forward, to help the economy to remove the poverty. India is not a small country, it's a continent. And we have a lot of problems. And the worst part is the bureaucracy. If there was ease to do business, whatever prime minister wanted, we would have been much ahead of what we are today. You see, I should not speak, but I am a very transparent person. British left the bureaucracy and Indians being talented, we updated in such a manner that nothing moves forward. <laughs> we get stuck somewhere or the other. Although here, in London, the bureaucracy has improved quite a lot. And one is very clear. If I want to make an investment in UK or in USA, in Europe, it's very easy. In India, even if an investor thinks to come and invest, he has to go through a lot of struggles and obstacles. I have my own experiences from the time we made the first foreign investment as an NRI in Ashok Leyland. <laughs> but <laughs> no grievance. So, Mr. Anduja, when we met last, and that was pre-COVID, December 2019, 
we spoke about the fact that you had the willingness and ability to invest but you wanted the ease of doing business to increase in the pandemic world a lot has changed a lot has changed in terms of willingness availability and ease of doing business reliance has got uh, big investments on the geo platform you got a lo uh, lot of other companies in the startup world which are able to attract now billions of dollars what is your experience are things looking up are you finding it easy to invest in india now you see to answer your question i will once again repeat nris ocis they are the real ambassadors of india they are the real wealth of india the government should make all efforts to see how to attract the nris what should be done for ocis to come invest in their motherland not only their with own funds but even the contacts and the relationships which they have built up abroad they could bring them because whoever wants to come in a foreign country they want to have comfort they get comfort when they have a good partner and the partner whom they know we have to do a lot to see how nris and ocis are treated at par you're in a perfect position mr induja to tell us that uh, where things are headed in uh, in the you know for the covid we understand that the third wave and the impact of the third wave is now visible at least in developed markets the country where you live in uh, things are looking the numbers are looking bad what is your sense if a third wave indeed comes through what kind of impact it will have what kind of economic impact it could have <laughs> let, let me tell you neither i am neither a scientist nor a doctor but from my experience in my own hospital hinduja hospital in mumbai in bangalore uh, and what i am seeing all around the world and what i am seeing here in london in my view nobody is an expert and master on these things each one is trying to do its best in my view, it is like we had ebola we had plague we had flu uh, we had that spanish uh, fever now all these things came and went away in my view we have to be optimistic and these vaccines which have come in i can't say they are 100% helpful but they are a great support and they give you a good comfort so in uk at least by now one dose has been given to about 81 82% two doses have been given to 62% from 19th july they want to bring in a full uh freedom and make the life normal now this is a great step you never know it may have both the sides one the good impact of the vaccine and normal uh, something like fever or flu need not be to hospitalize and the patient gets all right or it can be a third wave this at this stage no one can tell you so your question is very valid you saw in india what happened and they are already all talking about the third wave so <laughs> then what is the use of vaccines my personal view personal uh, instincts are that the third wave won't come 
there would be a much lesser impact, if any. Well, let's hope that happens, sir. Aapke mo mein ghi shakkar, that we don't see a very large third wave. Now, coming to the exciting part of the Hinduja group, uh, sir, you got presence in uh, the autos business, financial space, IT, and also cyber security now. So, which end of the group business you are most excited and optimistic about? What are the feelers which you are getting when you look through your various group businesses? It's a very good question. You see, the family had started from trading and finance. Trading and finance is in our blood. Now, being entrepreneurs in the second generation, we get instincts where to move, what to do. We have great examples in our life where we have moved from one sector to the second, second to the third, third to the fourth. And so far, we have never allowed any of our companies to die. Now, similarly, at this stage, everyone wants to get away from the old economy and get into technology business, especially cybersecurity, green, solar, hydrogen. Now, we believe banking, finance, which has been in our blood, will always survive. But we have to bring new technologies. We have to bring digitization platforms. We have to see how as the world keeps on changing, we have to keep on changing accordingly. Similarly, in manufacturing, if you look in Ashok Leyland, how many new technologies we have brought, whether it was in light commercial vehicle, whether it was in medium and heavy vehicles, whether it was in uh, electric vehicles, now we have a switch mobility. Uh, we have also a, another subsidiary we have formed in India called OM, where, so if we don't keep on changing and moving, then your question is very valid. The old economy will die. But old economy has a foundation, has an infrastructure. We have to have a good team of people. We have to have good thoughts to keep on developing it towards the new technology. To answer your question, we should be focused on upgrading the old economy into the new technology. And that's how the group has gone into cybersecurity. We have gone into solar energy. We are working hard on hydrogen. And one thing is clear that the third generation, which has joined in business, they are very active and they are all for new technology. They don't believe in old technology, but they are helping in developing the old economy into the new economy. So what kind of capital commitment uh, do you think Hinduja Group would do? in the new businesses, new ventures in the next three to four years? You see, let me tell you, we love our home country and motherland. We would love to invest as much as possible, provided there is a red carpet treatment for an investor and the systems, processes, and procedures are clear. I can never forget when Narsimha Rao was the prime minister, no one was investing in power and Indians wanted the first eight fast track projects. The investors came in, 
seven of them got out because the government could not honor all the commitments what they had done. We are the only one who left with Vizag and that also we have to struggle so much to make the state government and the central government to agree to whatever they have committed. So we have to see, I'm not referring to any help for my group. We have learned that in whichever country we are, we have to follow the culture, we have to follow the processes, we have to overcome the obstacles which come in. But to answer your question, it all depends on the policies, the structures, the convenience, and the Prime Minister has rightly said, make ease to do business. If make ease to do business is there, we would jump in our economy from 3 trillion to 10 trillions. And by 2030, we could be the largest, not second, but at least third economy in the world. So we all should have love for our country, love for our motherland. And our main focus is how the poverty in the country can be handled and disappeared. How more employments can be created. Right. That is our luxury. Because I'll tell you, in this world, one thing is certain. That is death. What we had brought, what we will take away, nothing. But if you are able to help, the world to remove the poverty and make each and every human being comfortable. There could not be a better focus than anything in the business. Well, what a nice thought, uh, Mr. Nduja. Well, let's get into specifics, uh, Mr. Nduja, if you allow me to get into specifics of Indescent Bank. Of late, there has been volatility in uh, the stock price of Indescent Bank, the numbers, the asset quality. Are you worried about how Indescent Bank, which in a sense was enjoying a pole positioning in terms of growth and growing higher than the industry, suddenly seems to be uh, falling off the track? Uh, do you think the worst is behind Indescent Bank? To answer your specific question, the worst is gone. If you look at the financial figures, the stock price should be anywhere between 1,700 to 1,800. But because of the setback which came in, today you are seeing it around 1,050. It has a great, great, great future and potentiality for any investors to invest in Indusin because the fundamentals are very strong. The corporate governance is strong. All the compliances are strong. More than anything, the management team is also unique. But Mr. Hinduja, every time there is volatility in Hinduja group of companies, markets are worried about one simple thing. What are the differences between the brothers? Where is the family feud headed? Will there be a separation? What will happen to the existing shareholders? But well, that I already explained to you that there is no feud in the brothers. These four brothers, four bodies are one soul. We have acted as one team. But, and the way everything has been structured, even when the third generation or fourth generation comes, it will have no impact anything on any businesses. But people who are unaware, who are innocent, who are ignorant, they suspect and they get a feeling, oh, this may happen, this may have an effect, but it has nothing to do with any businesses. Businesses will always keep on not only surviving, but growing. Is it true that the Hinduja group is looking at restructuring of the healthcare business? 
Healthcare is a non-profit making business. So there is no question of restructuring. Recently, we had one profit making hospital also in uh, car, uh, which also the family decided to make it a non-profit making and we merged it with the Hinduja hospital in Mahim. So in the family, our late father, the founder left one thing that was the first right of human being was health and education and we should always give away. And as I mentioned before also many a times that in our family, Everything belongs to everyone, nothing belongs to anyone. And we work to give away. The two large businesses were very interesting. One is clean energy and second in cyber security. Why are you excited about two complementary businesses? Yeah. You see, cyber security is the future of the world. Now, there is a lot of competition also. There is a lot of talent, lot of new developments are happening. And we are focused to see what best we can do to make everyone in India proud of having the best headquarters of cybersecurity in India. But it is a great work. It's not an easy task. We have also made a joint venture uh, go to market with Tech Mahindra because we found them that they were quite well developed for service. So we are trying to see how we can take double steps, what best can be done. And at the moment, US development in uh, cybersecurity is about 80, 82% on the total volume, I'm telling you. So far as India is concerned, although it is growing, but it is not growing in that speed, what one would have thought. But it will keep on growing. That is our vision. We're into the pandemic, what has been the most joyful and the most scary moment for GP Induja? Joyful moment in this one and a half year? Yes, please. Okay, let me tell you. To be honest, every day we pray to God the coronavirus should go. We cannot tolerate and we can never see what is happening to the poor people. The rich people they can at least protect themselves by getting hospitalization, doctors, even if the hospital is full, they find some contacts, relationship, they go. But we emotionally get touched. But to keep ourselves only in that thing, we will get depression. So we have been continuously working through Zooms and VCs. And one of the best venture what we have done is to create a legacy in UK, in London, on the old war office, which was the office of Winston Churchill. Even the first Sean Canary movie was shot from there. And it is a trophy project. There were many competitors. We acquired in 2016, 17. It took two years for getting all permissions. And we started our sales from uh, June beginning. And it has turned out to be a very successful project. And we are hoping the inauguration will be next summer. 
and the objective has been to make it a unique project not only in uk and europe but at least in the world in the top 3 and whoever has visited the site is amazed is shocked at how and how much money has been put in so we thought having lived in 40 years in london let's do something to leave a legacy there which we have i would say 97 98% been successful but i believe success is only counted after you have seen the results so let's have our next interview next year after the inauguration and <laughs> i'll give you the answer to it and the second thing is a person like me in this one and a half year got the joy to upgrade myself in the technology <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise at this age huh, it would have been difficult if i was sitting in the office all the work was done by my secretary my assistants my executives but sir here i have to do everything myself <laughs> because in the family nobody allows outsiders to come in the home well, I look forward to more engagements with you. Why wait for the interview for one more year? And I look forward to have, uh, uh, you know, more representation and more, more family members next time when we interact with you on this forum. Stay safe, sir. And an absolute pleasure to have you on ET now.